Hello, this is Angelia with today's Bible reading. Today's reading comes from Titus 2, Duties of the Older and Younger. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Older men are to be temperate, uh, keep your temper, dignified, you know, hold yourself with some dignity, um, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. And women should do that too. Um, you know, uh, again, with the sensible, um, like I said, Jesus said, be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Um, and some people kind of take the uh, approach that you're just supposed to follow blindly, not think for yourself, do what, you know, ever was said to you. Um, and that's not uh, which he's told you so um, sound in faith again if you're a Christian you should be sound in faith we all backslide we all commit sins that's a fact of life um, Jesus said no none of us are perfect and we're not going to be you're just supposed to perfect yourself um, in love now love is the opposite of hate so if you're a hater and you're hating on people for whatever reason then you're doing the opposite of love right um and if god is love and jesus taught us to love one another and you're being a hater and hateful then you're doing the opposite of what you were told uh by god and jesus so that you might want to tweak um in perseverance um and that's the hardest part just waiting for something you know persevering going through you know especially if you know, it's not coming right away, or you're not having success right away, or whatever. Um, persevering is hard, but we're to do that. We're to stay in there and <laughs> do it and persevere. Um, older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior. Um, so, you know, behave like uh, a lady, a uh, good Christian lady. Um, not malicious gossips um and there's way too many of those um i have heard just some nasty women saying nasty things about other people um just pure meanness um and telling stuff that they probably know is not true um <laughs> one of my in-laws um told me she hated me when i was 17 years old and she's operated on that mo since then I mean, she tells stories about me uh, that are just pure meanness, pure hatefulness, not true. Um, someone else in her family confronted me one time about something I had supposedly been doing. And I said, where did you hear that? They said, well, she told me that. And I said, that's not true. Oh, what is the truth? Well, here's what's going on. This and this and that. Oh, well, she said you were doing. I was like, no, that's a lie. And she's, oh, well, uh, you know, because she was clearly uncomfortable. Um, and then she actually kind of confronted the other person and said, oh, you told me this. But she said, and she's like, well, I don't know. She don't talk to me. She doesn't tell me anything. And it's like, mm, you just get caught in your lie. <laughs> Nor enslaved too much wine. Um, there's some women that they like their wine a lot, you know, uh, so we're not supposed to be doing that. Um, teaching what is good, you know, there's some people who will tell you to do bad things. Um, I know a family where the matriarch of the family, um, encourages bad behavior, um, and then wonders why, you know, her kids are running wild. It's like, well, duh. <laughs> You know, if you teach your kids to be good, then they're going to try and be good. Um, if you teach your kids to be bad, then they're, of course, going to be bad. It's, you know, children learn what they live. Um, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands. And you should love your husband. Um, why are you married to him if you don't love him? I hear some women sometimes talking about their husband like he was a dog. Running him down. You know, not other times. It's okay if it's the truth. And your husband is uh, bad to you, then you know you might want to step out on that. Uh, but you know, I've heard women just out of meanness, you know, talk about their husband and he's like this and he does this and then 
And I'm like, why are you married to him then? If he it disgusts you so much, if you hate him so much, why are you married to him? Get a divorce. Good gosh. Otherwise, love your husband. <laughs> uh, to love their children. And, of course, you should love their children. Now, there are sometimes problems with, you know, postpartum depression and things like that. Um, but if you don't love your children, why did you bother to have them? You know, and that's what I say. Um, everybody knows how you make a baby. If you don't, you need to go ask somebody, go talk to your doctor, <laughs> figure it out. But everybody knows how to make a baby. Um, so if you knew what you were doing to make a baby and you had a baby, you need to love that child. Um, I hate seeing parents like out in stores or restaurants or whatever and they're just so mean to their kid. And you can tell they don't look at that kid as a child to love. They look at that kid as a pure burden that they hate, that they're burdened with. And those, you know, I just want to walk up to and say, hey, you know what? You don't want that kid. I'll take it. You know, I'll raise that kid. I don't have a problem. You know, parenting's hard, you know. And if that's the way you feel about a child, maybe you should give it to someone else or give it up or whatever. Give it a chance to be loved. Because if you don't love your child... They're going to know that, and then they're going to grow up feeling unloved. So, you know, um, show your children you love them. To be sensible, again, common sense, use it. Pure, and of course, you know, uh, that means keeping yourself out of other people's husband's bed. You know, keep, keep your stuff to yourself. Um, workers in love at home. Um, because, you know, if you love your family, you're willing to do some stuff for them. Now, uh, having said that, I don't believe you should be a slave to your family. You have a right to your own life. If you want to write, do it. If you want to do art, do it. If you want to play music, write music, do it. You know, sing, uh, make arts and crafts, you know, act, um, take up running, Whatever you want to do, do it. Because you can only fill from your overflow. If your cup is empty, you can't fill it for anybody else. Um, so you're going to wear yourself out and you're going to resent your family. And I know because I've done it. Um, when I was much younger, much younger, um, I was being preached to uh, by my husband's uh, family that I needed to do this, that, and the other thing. And the guys he worked with would say, oh, woman this, woman that. And I was fucking miserable, excuse my language, hope they don't bleep this out, but I was so miserable because I had no life. When I left home, I had in mind this life that I was going to have, um, but instead I became a slave. And it broke my body to the point where I have osteosclerosis, um, you know, and osteoarthritis. Um, and there came a point when I went to talk to someone about this, it's like, you know, I felt like I'm a bad person for wanting... And they're like, no, whoever's telling you that, that's the exact wrong thing that they should be telling you. You don't have to be a slave. You don't have to do this every day. You don't have to do that every day. You don't have to sacrifice your body uh, for other people. That is not, you know, uh, these people do not have your uh, best interests at heart. Um, and you need to take a step back and look at this picture again. <clears throat> and so I did. And I was like, you know what? She's right. <laughs> this is not doing me any good. You know, Jesus Jesus was the martyr, so I didn't have to be kind. And kindness goes along with it. There's no reason to be unkind to people. Um, I see sometimes people just nasty, snippy people. And it's like, no, you know, there's no reason to be unkind to people. Uh, being subject to their own husbands. And to a reason, an extent, you should be. Um, if he's making... Uh, all the money and you're you know doing something else uh, or staying at home then you should be subject to him in that regard you shouldn't go out and spend all kinds of money and say oh honey I did this you know and they'd be like what you know we got bills to pay or whatever so you know you should be subject to your husband in <laughs> a certain line excuse me but that doesn't mean you're your husband's slave. He doesn't own you. You know, we are not chattel. The world has realized women are not chattel. We, we're actually people. Oh, my gosh. 
Um, <laughs> and we have a right to our own life. So that the word of God will not be dishonored. Um, and again, um, they, <laughs> there was an opinion back in the day uh, that women were too impulsive and emotional. Um, and <laughs> compared to men, they might feel that way sometimes. Because we have three times the connections in our corpus callosum, which is the center of your brain, so that our left side and right side talk to each other faster. You know, we can work on comparing logic and emotion at the same time. Men can't do that. They're modal. They have to shift gears. It takes them three times longer to arrive to a conclusion that we can arrive to three times faster. That's why they called it women's intuition to the to them in the day. You know, uh, it appeared like women had this intuition that men didn't have. But actually, uh, we process faster, you know. And the reason for that was we had to ensure the survival of the next generation. We had to look for places to hide or where to run or whatever. We had to think faster. Um, whereas men could stand and fight or hunt or whatever. Uh, so they, you know, didn't need that emotion, you know, because we wouldn't have got fed if, you know, the man's like, oh, look at that little deer. It's so cute. Oh, you know, then we wouldn't have got the meat. So, <laughs> you know, we were made the way we were for a reason. <clears throat> Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible. Again, use your common sense. In all things, show yourself to be an example of good deeds. And we should do those every day anyway. You know, you shouldn't do them just to show off for other people. I did this good deed, yay. No, you should just do it anyway. With purity in doctrine. Um, and, you know, we're reading it off of it. And, you know, purity in doctrine. But, again, I, I have the study Bible here. And we have, like, this much of uh, scholars' uh, notes on things. So, we know that sometimes uh, some of the things they believed back in the day this Bible was written um, colored their perception and understanding of things. Uh, whereas we know a little bit more nowadays. Now, there are purists, um, and again, it says pure in doctrine. There are purists that believe, no matter what we've learned since then, um, and some of them don't even want to believe in science. Science is fake. It's all, it's all about God. Um, but I believe God created science, and someday science will probably prove God exists. So, again, you got to have some common sense with this, um, and take the pure doctrine based on what you know now. Um, because, like I said, we know now um, that women are not chattel. Um, we can understand things. We can read and write. And, you know, we're not just this old thing running around. <laughs> so, you know, um, like I said, you got to have some understanding. Um, and, you know, if you have a study Bible, it's good to read the little things they have down here. Um, because then you understand that. This was a tradition of the day. This is what they thought in the day or whatever. And, you know, it will help you uh, understand a little bit more about why this thing was a thing. <clears throat> Dignified. Again, you should carry yourself with some dignity. I know there's people out there, they don't respect anyone and they don't because they don't even respect themselves. You can tell by the way they act. And it's like, wow. I mean, you know, I don't like to go around calling people trash but that's the word I was raised with when people act a certain way um but you know if you have no respect for yourself or anyone else then you're definitely behaving in an undignified manner um and you might not care if you are if that's the way you are um but you know as a Christian you're supposed to carry yourself in a dignified manner um sound in speech which is beyond reproach um you know, uh, <laughs> that's that's a little harder because people have differing opinions. People, you know, come with one thing or another thing. Culture affects that, too. Um, but, you know, um, you should speak what you know. And you should, you know, be sure. And you're not trying to 
goose somebody up or f pull somebody this way or that. Um, there are people who do this stuff, tricksters and, you know, people using uh, religion for their own personal, you know, agendas and gains and things like that. Um, we've seen that a lot here recently. But, you know, you're supposed to be a decent person so that the opponent will be put to shame. Um, and that can mean the evil one, uh, the evil forces, or someone who's coming against you. Um, you know, like I said, know your word, read your word over and over and over. Now, again, I don't believe in the Bible something chapter and verse as weapons shooting arrows at people with that. But if you know your stuff, then when people try and tell you something different, you be like, oh no, you know, because this is what Jesus said, you know. Um, and I've had people get mad at me. Oh, don't you tell me what it says. I'm telling you, I read it. It's there. I know, you know. Um, and, you know, I might have to look at the uh, top of the, the titles here, the paragraphs, to find exactly where it is because I don't memorize them. Um, but I'll know it's there. And I've had people get mad at me. Um, and then when I'm proven right, they're even madder, you know. So, <laughs> Just saying, you know, if you, if you know your, your subject matter, you won't be put to shame. Um, having nothing bad to say about us. Um, because, you know, people down on the Christians. Nowadays, people are down on the Christians because of the way some of them act. Um, but, you know, we're supposed to be an example so that, you know, Christianity is supposed to look good to other people. Um, and that's something we definitely need to work on nowadays. Um, urge bond slaves to be subject to their own masters and everything. And again, we don't really have those today. Um, some countries kind of do that thing. Uh, and, you know, in my book, that's wrong. Uh, because that's people with wealth taking advantage of poor people. Um, but, uh, you know, workers, you know, respect your bosses and things of that nature. To be well-pleasing... And, you know, again, we're supposed to all get along. Um, not argumentative. Um, and sometimes in an employment situation, that can be hard. If you know the person in charge is doing something bad to you, taking advantage of you, accusing you of something that you're not doing, um, or accusing you of not doing something that you are doing. <laughs> you know, like your job. Um, <laughs> so sometimes it's hard to not argue, you know. Um, and I had a policy like... Okay, you said this one thing that was wrong. Okay, this is... Then about, about the third time, um, you know, I'd do the old baseball thing. That's a strike. You know? Um, and then eventually there's going to come a point where I'm just going to say, Hey, you know what? You allowed this, that, and the other thing to happen in the workplace. Um, so you did not have my best interests at heart. Therefore, I do not feel the need to continue to work for you because you don't have my best interests. So I really don't care about your interests anymore. I'm going somewhere else. Bye. <laughs> you know, and then it's always amazing to them. Oh, well, well, I don't know that it, it bothered you that bad, or I didn't know all that was going on. And then, like, yeah, sure, whatever. <coughs> <coughs> if you're the boss, you're supposed to know what's going on in your workplace. Not pilfering, and again, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. You shouldn't be stealing, but showing all good faith so that they will adorn the doctrine of God with our Savior in every respect um, because that's what we're supposed to be doing we're supposed to be reflections of Jesus so that uh, we're leading people to him for the grace of God has appeared in Jesus Christ bringing salvation to all men and women Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly. Um, and, you know, that speaks straight to greed. Um, you know, you shouldn't be wanting everything you see. There are people who are like that. There are people who are jealous, who are envious of what other people have. And you shouldn't be like that. You should be happy with what you have. Now, um, if you got a little money and, and you want something and you can afford to buy it, okay, do that. But, again, you know, I know of a family who spends more than they earn. Um, and they have to borrow money, and they have to borrow money from people, and they have to borrow money from other places to pay back that money that they borrowed. 
And, I mean, if you're living to keep up with the Joneses, then that's not a real life. That's a fake life that you've built, you know, usually to make yourself look good to other people. Um, and that's not reality. Um, so you need to live within your means. You know, I, I preach budgets. Make a budget um, and stick to your budget, you know. You can have a little something extra if you have a budget and you have spending money set aside in the budget. You know, you have, I have this much money to spend this week. Um, then you can get something that you want um, that you can afford. Um, and then you're going to feel better about that than if you went out and spent a lot of money that you didn't have. Um, and then you got creditors calling you or whatever. So, you know, live sensibly. Um, righteously and godly in the present age. Um, so that's for all ages. You know, being a righteous, godly person, you know, might have gone out of vogue with some people, um, as it always does. Um, but if you're a Christian, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior. Um, because he's coming back someday and we're supposed to be watchful. Um, a lot of people think it's going to be soon because of what's going on in, you know, Israel over there. Um, but you never know, but you want to be ready. Um, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed. Um, because we're now under the grace of Christ. Um, because he went to the cross for our sins. He committed no sin. He went to the cross for our sins. So if we just believed in him, then, um, you know, we could be saved. Now, um, once you're saved, um, there are people who say you can't be unsaved. People who say you can, you can backslide and, and lose your salvation. I think once you're saved, you're saved. But also your deeds are going to be reported and you're going to have to answer for those. Um, it's like I said, I don't know what kind of hierarchy they got up there, but I just, I, I'm going to be a good person because I'm going to be cleaning out the stables in heaven, you know. <laughs> And to purify for himself a people for his own possession. You know, God's people, the ones he marked um, as his. Um, zealous for good deeds. And again, you know, we should just be decent people and do that anyway. Um, these things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. So we're to tell it. Um, and if we see people not doing it, uh, we are within our right to exhort. But again... You draw more flies with honey than with vinegar. So you can come to someone in a positive way and say, hey, you know what? Um, I saw this. I heard this. And, you know, Jesus said, um, and tell them what Jesus said. Um, you don't have to be, oh, you are a sinner. You are bad because you did this. And that's against what it says in the Bible. You know, because there's no faster way to run somebody out than having to hear that. Um, and you can reprove one another. That's fine. Um, I reprove myself. I'll, I'm, I'm like, shouldn't have said that. You know, that's not right. Um, and we should do that with each other. If you hubby or the kids or whatever, like, no, that's not right. Um, <laughs> that, that's fine, but you don't have to be a jerk about it. Um, because we do have the authority in Christ. We are the righteousness of Christ, saved by grace. Um, and he gave us the authority. If you remember, he gave us all the authority to do things he did, you know. So, we have the authority. Um, let no one disregard you. Now, that's hard because people can disregard you if they want to. <laughs> you know, but if you talk about what you know about, um, it's a little harder for them to disregard. Because I've had people who um, were not Christian people and I say, well, it says that. And I say, it's in here. I think it's in this um, chapter around this verse, you know. Um, and they'll look it up and they'll, hey, you're right. You know, I there was a guy I witnessed to at a place I worked. And he was not a Christian. And he didn't know much about it. And um, he got a Bible. Because I, I called him out on something one day. And he's, I said, hey, it says that. And he's like, oh. And I said, no. And this, I think it's in Matthew, this thing. And so he, he said, hey, you're right. And so he started reading the Bible. Um, so you never know what good you're going to do. Um if you just be a witness to people, you know, um, and that is Paul's opinion on the duties of the older and younger folks in the church. Amen. That's all for now.